What up, guys? Stephen Kristoff here for episode four of the Gate Drop Pod Show. This episode, we talk to MXGP women's rider Avery Berry. She is over in Belgium right now. Really fun interview. So much to talk about. And yeah, she races in Europe and is currently living in Europe. Check out this long distance phone call with Avery Berry. The Gate Drop Pod Show starts now. All right, this is episode four of the Gate Drop Pod Show. This is Stephen Kristoff here from Gate Drop Productions. I am with Avery Berry. Avery, how's it going over in Europe? Hey, Kristoff. Thanks. I'm doing good here. Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah. Um, it's been going good over here in Europe. Uh, I mean, things are pretty locked down still definitely a lot more strict than in america but we're able to ride and train and everything so i'm really like thankful about that so you're still dealing with lockdown stuff over there i know it's like been like kind of hectic over here and we're starting to kind of come out of our caves what's the what's the situation over there in belgium for you yeah so we're still pretty locked down um I understand, like, everything's kind of starting to open back up in America, but here we're still waiting to hear when things will open back up. Like, you can't go eat at restaurants and stuff, and there's really strict rules. Like, you're not technically supposed to cross uh, borders here if you don't have, like, a good reason. Um, But crossing borders here is, like, moving from state to state in America, so it's kind of hard not to do, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, just a lot of people can't work right now. So it's just been a little bit tougher than in America. But I'm just happy that the tracks are open because they were closed for a few months um, during the first lockdown. So I'm just really, really happy about that. Jeez. And then, like, just to imagine with you, like, you know, that's not your original home since you originally came out of Washougal, Washington. I, I could imagine with everything being locked down and no dirt bikes for the time being, it's just like, what I what do I do? He's twiddling your fingers. Yeah. So anyways, uh, just kind of moving away from like all the lockdowns and whatnot so we can talk to talk about the real beef and all the awesome things that you're doing over there. Uh, to just start mm-hmm. off at the very beginning with a quick question, how did you get into dirt bike racing? Um, I'd say overall it was my family. Uh, my dad and my brother, my brother, I'm sure a, a lot of people from the Northwest know him, Tanner Berry. He's five years older than me and he started racing and, uh, it was really a family thing for us. We were always at the track on the weekend. So I started pretty young. I was three when I got a PW and then I think I was four when I did my first race and we just went from there Tanner was always racing so I was always able to go also and um yeah every weekend that we could be at the track we were Hmm. was it Washougal like the first racetrack for you to ride with you living so close or what was your first like kind of racetrack for you um well we we moved to Washougal probably like I haven't been living there my whole life I've been I was there for like Six years ago, we moved there, I want to say. Um, before, we lived more up north, like near like Riverdale, actually, or like Grays Harbor, you know, kind of in that area. Yeah. So I, oh, like, I, re- I remember Pacific Raceways is where I grew up 
um, racing, like I think weeknights, you know? So yeah, that's, that's where I grew up, but we would always make like the three hour drive to Washougal. Um, so eventually I, we just decided to move there because it's a really nice area and for the track mostly. Yeah. And then with being in the Washougal area, kind of the same for me, it's like, it's kind of the central point between Washington and Oregon track. So it's like, you know, you got like about just a little over an hour difference if you were wanting to go to like Albany or Woodland or Washougal. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, kind of like the Mecca there for the Northwest. Um, I think it was like 2015 was when I, when I crossed paths with you at Albany for the PRO race. Um, for women's mm -hmm. riders with it not being a, as big anymore, especially with the AMA, unfortunately gutting it out of all AMA competition over here. Um, how did you keep yourself motivated and pushing to get to continue racing for you in the women's class? Yeah, well, obviously I was really disappointed because I grew up, um, you know, seeing girls racing in X Games and stuff, and I watched that slowly go away. But um, motocross has always just been fun for me. Like, I've, if I could be on a bike every single day, like, I'll have fun, and, and that's when I was improving the most. But, yeah, then I kind of switched my focus, and I looked at Europe. And I saw, like, how amazing the series is here for women and how fast the girls are. And so I was able to kind of switch my goal to race in Europe instead of racing in America. I definitely didn't think that I would race in Europe. It was just kind of a dream. But that was my main motivation as I got older. So how did that come about? Like, you can't – I don't – for me – that's just crazy because like when I've talked to Ryan Brees and he's talked about going over to Germany and doing all that racing and whatnot, like I just asked him like, how do you do it? And he's just like, well, you know, people, I'm just like, but how mm -hmm. does that come about? Like, I'm not just walking down the street, like, Hey, can you take me to Belgium? Like, how did that start for you? Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it just, a lot of things came together really good, but I discussed with Roger DeCoster. I told him, like, I, I want to go race in Europe. And uh, I definitely want to do it, you know, on a KTM. And he contacted some KTM teams in Europe. And there was a Belgian KTM team that said that they would take me as a guest rider in 2017 just so I could go and try it out. So basically, like, yeah, we booked the flight and then came to Belgium for a few weeks. I did two races, and I didn't even think that I did very good in the races, but it, it made me realize, like, how high the level was. And the team said, like, yeah, like, I could sign a contract for the next year if I wanted to and move to Belgium. So I was like, yeah, like, absolutely, there's no doubt in my mind that I don't want to be here. So. Um, yeah, it was just basically everything came together in my favor. There's a lot of people that helped me out to get there and I'm just really grateful. Nice. How'd you get that connection with Roger DeCosta? Was it like Loretta Lynn's related? Cause I know at least I think up till now, I think they still do. Don't they have their L Loretta Lynn's class for the women still here over in the States? Yeah, they have just one race a year for women in the U S and that's at Loretta's. But uh, I met Roger at a, a race in Hangtown, and uh, that's where I discussed. I did the amateur days at Hangtown at the National. Okay. Yeah, it's just always – it's such a small world. My dad was a huge fan of Roger DeCosta, and he's like me with Ryan yeah. Dungey, where it's, like, hard to, like, get words out when you're, like, face-to-face -face with him. And I was like that with Ryan yeah. back when he was racing, like, kind of, like, cardboard cutout, like, wave at him. <laughs> but that's mm -hmm. another whole side story. Yeah. Um, what's the competition like over in the women's class for MXGP? Is it pretty different compared to, like, racing PRO or PacWest over here? Yeah. I mean, the women's class is the only way I can describe it right now is it's elite and the, it gets better every year. The top five girls are really, you know, they're really good, but not even just the top five, you know, the top 
20, like everybody racing, like those girls, like we're all really close in speed and there's not any huge gaps between everybody, you know, it's some really fierce competition and, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's really, really tough because these girls, they ride, like they grew up riding like the gnarliest tracks and they've, you know, trained in the gym since they were super young. So, but yeah, it's great. Like I wouldn't want it any other way. I would rather be, you know, struggling and racing than having like, you know, easy wins. I think it's, you know, I love racing in the Northwest, but I wish we could promote women's racing more and just get more girls out there, you know? Yeah. I mean, that has always been one of my classes, like even with my family too, like that's one of the huge classes that we enjoy watching and supporting and within my own gate drop productions, like team that I have going on, like I've got, I think three or four girls that are part of the gate drop and they're so stoked and, mm -hmm. you know, excited the race and whatnot. I can see that fire in them, just like the, like the fire you have in yourself. Um, What's the tracks like over there compared to the United States? Is there anyone that you're just like, I have to ride this? Like, is this rideable? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, most of them. Like, I'm not trying to be a hater because they're, these tracks are what will shape you into being a great rider, but they're hard. Like, they're just so tough. Like, you know, the, we have a lot of sand in Belgium and a day at the sand track, like, you are just so tired afterwards. And uh, the hard pack tracks are really, like, really hard pack. They're more like cement. So Jeez. I kind of had to change my riding style. I'm used to groomed, perfect tracks and ruts and stuff like that. But now I'm really focusing on all my weaknesses, like sand and, and really, really hard pack tracks. Yeah, because, like, you know, the the comparison from probably Woodland to uh, what, what's the track over there that you've gone recently in Belgium? Uh, I live I live really close to Lummel. Yeah, that was the one I was trying to resource. They're probably dramatically yeah. different, like, just on just the dirt yeah. type. Because I know uh, mm -hmm. even, like, like, factory riders, like, like Team USA and whatnot, like, even Dungey and Martin, when they went over there for USA for the donations, they were having, like, issues, like, at first with Lamal because mm -hmm. it's such a hardcore sand track, and we don't really have anything over there. Is there is that, like, your favorite track for Belgium, or wh what? what is actually, uh, like, over there for you? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Lummel. Like, <laughs> I've probably only had a few good days there, but it's challenging, so I like it. But, yeah, I mean, there's Lummel. There's a lot of sand tracks around me. There's a Dunkirk in France that's also, like, the lap times can be three minutes sometimes because it's so rough and so long. Jeez. Yeah, my favorite track in Europe is probably Red Sand, and that's, like, the most American track that we have here so yeah it's just it's just different like that's all it is it's just you can't get it in the states yeah uh going into your uh career race results here it looks like uh the netherlands have always treated you pretty well it looks like out of all yours all your uh, positions here it says uh you got ninth there in 2018 is that correct yeah what was that like breaking the top 10 in the women's class after knowing and you telling me how difficult it is over there? Yeah, well, that ironically is like a really tough sand track. That was Assen, and uh, that's where Nations was, uh, I want to say last year or the last time we had it. Yeah, um, previous year. But yeah, I mean, like 2018 was a really good year for me because I progressed from like outside the top 20 into the top 10. So I was really, really happy with how I was doing. And top 10 is still a goal. Like I, I don't want to be anywhere behind that, you know? Yeah. Um, let's see. We got Torrentino, uh, got all these other racetracks. Is there a specific country and racetrack that you like enjoyed the most on the circuit? Yeah, there's a uh, Autobiano that's in, Italy that's a pretty nice track it's like also sandy but 
like some big jumps and like more high speed. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess I enjoy sand more than hard pack, but that's just because the hard pack tracks are just they just have rocks or they're just I don't know. I just don't I just don't have a lot of fun on them. Could it be just you you know like if you hit the ground you're probably going to be breaking something with the with the rocky hardcore tracks versus sand? Is that just probably a mental thing for yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I'm definitely working on getting out of my comfort zone more this year and also it could be because I've been living so close to Lummel and you know Lummel's always open, so you know all the tracks are closed, we go to Lummel. And uh, that might have just kind of turned me more into a sand rider. Yeah, that, that makes sense. When you're mm-hmm. racing on the same platform, just like me with Albany, like I can be so much faster at Albany and then I'll go to Washougal and I'm complete trash. <laughs> it's just the, yeah, the I mean, style. it just depends. It just depends. Yeah, I get that. With the women's class still existing over there in the MXGP class, and their whole setup, do you follow the whole schedule with MXGP and MXGP2, or do you guys have, like, a shorter schedule before lockdowns? Um, so we have normally, like, five or six um, races in the MXGP, so the guys have, you know, they have a lot. They have, like, 20 or something. So we're, we're a world champion, but we race kind of uh, the same amount of races as the the EMX 250, the EMX 125, um, they do kind of push us aside, like, let us have as many races, which is, I understand that because we definitely can't make all those races, you know, we can't go to Asia, stuff like that, but I would definitely love to see more, more MXGP races and less big gaps because sometimes we have, like, months in between races, but, yeah, so we also have other series that we can follow like uh european championship dutch championship stuff where you can fill in the gaps in between the mxgp okay so your team that you're on currently uh, i think you're what racing a husqvarna now yeah it's a uh, husqvarna belgium through a uh, leon cigar uh, bike shop nice so they give you a schedule so they obviously they want to do the mxgp women's class but like you said they have like a schedule set up for you to do dutch and all that other stuff well so I'm supported um, by them, uh, Husqvarna, and but I'm basically uh, private. So I'm a privateer. I can choose my own schedule. If I just wanted to do a world championship, then I could. But uh, oh, okay. yeah, so it's it's basically up, it's up to me. Okay. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out with like all all the differences between European racing and then the state stuff. It's just like what what do you exactly do? Especially when you have a shorter series for you. It's just like, well, I only have five races over here. Do you just get to kick back and relax between? Or like I don't know. It is Europe, so there's plenty of things to do when, you know, things aren't locked down. What's the differences in lifestyle over there compared to like over here in the states are you having issues with like i know you've been there for a couple of years now what's the language difference like over in belgium and then kind of just the culture yeah i mean this could be a, a long topic there's a lot of differences uh yeah it's it's really different here but i've really adapted well i'd say i've been here for a few years and I feel extremely comfortable compared to um, when I moved here. When I moved here, I was 17, so I was still afraid to go to the grocery store because I didn't know how it worked. But just everything's different here, you know, how you pump gas, how you flush the toilet, and <laughs> and uh, just how, how everybody talks, you know. It's just different, that's all. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, my mechanic, he doesn't even speak English, so it forces me to, you know, learn Dutch. So now I think it's kind of crazy that I can, you know, communicate with my mechanic, not even in in English, and and we work really well together. So, yeah, I mean, all I can say is it's just different, but it suits me. I really like it here, and uh, people are really hard workers, and people have showed me how to work hard here. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice here. I mean, to me, it's like, I'm, I, in my opinion, you have like the, 
the dream job because you get to travel, you get to ride your dirt bike and see all these awesome things in between if you choose to. So like if you go to Italy, I don't know how close any of the tracks are to Rome or whatnot, but does it, are you able to go yeah. see and like kind of live that lifestyle of a, of a tourist, like in between races and whatnot? Well, actually like, honestly, no, Be because, uh, you know, you, you fly in, you go to the race, you do your race and then you leave right after. Like that's normally how it goes. But this year with COVID was actually like better to be a tourist because we had a, a few places where like I raced two times in Montova, Italy, and we stayed like super close to the, the city there. And so, yeah, we had two free days and we got to go and take bicycles into the, into the city with castles and stuff. And, just really enjoy it and that was really nice i definitely want to focus on doing that more this year because i think like when you're constantly just surrounded by motocross like it can cloud your mind you know and if you don't have a good race you just fly home like you kind of need to get your mind off of things you got to go see the world you know yeah uh what are the fans like over there for you girls the fans yeah at the races um they're great like i felt more respected here like as a woman because in america I always felt like you know people say oh you're fast for a girl like uh you know because you're a girl you're fast you know i just never felt like fully appreciated but here they're like yeah you're fast like and, but i just feel more respected and the fans are crazy, honestly. Like, I've been racing, and people have thrown, like, confetti, like, right in my face, like, because <laughs> I was, you know, taking an inside line, and they're crazy about MXGP, which I think is really cool because, yeah, it makes you feel, like, it, it makes you excited and excited to race, so it's pretty cool. I wonder if it's just the same fan that was also going after Ryan Brees because he took out Tyler Bowers in Germany. I wonder if it's just a circulating fan that just goes berserk and found you. He's like, she's American. I must do something. <laughs> yeah, well, I just think there's a lot of uh, crazy, enthusiastic Europeans <laughs> that watch the races. Yeah, it seems to be like that, especially with the nations, you know, they're always showing videos of like each country, especially the Italians. They're always just going berserk whenever mm -hmm. Tony Caroli comes out. So that's awesome that like they're cheering you, you girls on as well, because, you know, it's super important for you guys to race and that's your guys' life and it feels great to be appreciated. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's pretty cool. So are you full time resident now in Belgium? Yeah, I am. I even have a like a Belgian residency card, like a a passport to travel between countries. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Is there ever a plan coming back here and visiting, or are you just full time Europe now? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I normally come home two times a year. I plan for like summer and winter, um, and yeah. As, I mean, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be racing for, but I'm not sure how long I'm going to be living here for. We just go day by day, and um, I'm just ha really happy where I am at right now. Okay, so I'll eventually see you again, <laughs> is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Um, I only have a few questions left. I know it's pretty getting pretty late over there for you. Um, what, yeah, who yeah. was, was there like a particular racer that you looked up to, to get you to where you're at now, like inspired you to go racing? Yeah. I mean, I definitely looked up to like Ashley Fiola when I was younger because she was so like elite in women's racing. And, um, yeah, I looked up to a lot of racers, you know, guys, girls, um, everybody, also, like, my brother, truly, like, I, I saw my brother chasing his dream when, you know, he was my age right now, and um, I just, I always wanted to follow the same path, so, yeah. Uh, what would you say or tell, like, girls coming up, like, my, one of my little riders, Adley Rigger, she's racing at 65 right now. What would you advise her to do to continue to pursue the dream of racing motocross? Um, I would say most of all, just have fun. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid to race against the boys 
because that's only going to make you better and uh, make you feel good when you beat boys. And, uh, yeah, most of all, just have fun. Take it seriously, but not too seriously. And just keep pushing yourself, always trying to improve every time you ride. And, and uh, yeah. Sweet. Uh, is there any upcoming races for you? Or are you guys just still kind of on hold? Um, so, yeah, the races have been postponed till summer basically my first race is july 25th in czech republic and then a week after in lummel which i'm quite excited about so yeah my my racing starts in the summer um so i still have a lot of time but that's good for me because i still feel like i I have a lot of work to do and i'm just trying to get my body right and everything Sweet. Yeah, I, I bet racing and practicing at Lamal is really helping you out. And hopefully, I'm hoping you'll get, you know, a 1-1 one, one or something. A 1-1, one, one, yeah, for sure. I mean, you got to uh, set the bar got, high, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got my goals for this year, and I definitely think I can achieve them. So, yeah, I just want to improve every race, and um, we'll see how it goes. Sweet. For everyone that wants to follow you, what's the best resource for people to see what you're doing day to day? Um, I'm on Instagram a lot, which is just Avery. Uh, yeah, that's the main thing that I use. Sometimes I make YouTube videos. I haven't lately, but yeah, Instagram is the way to find me. All right. Well, that is Avery Berry. Avery, hey, I appreciate you taking the long distance call. I know everyone's been just waiting and wondering where's Avery been what's she been doing oh she's having fun over there in Belgium (laughs) I appreciate (laughs) you taking the time for the gate drop pro podcast I hope everything just opens up and continues going well for you thank you so much yeah and thank you for uh letting me be on your podcast and uh hopefully I'll see you sometime soon in the northwest heck yeah that's Avery Berry this Stephen Kristoff this is a gate drop pod show tuning out wow god i need my coffee (laughs) signing out (laughs) (laughs) thanks guys and gals for listening to episode four of the gate drop pod show i will be doing more of these episodes every friday and give you all the insights of riders in the northwest if you want to hear more episodes from the past and in the future, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Gate Drop Productions, as well as follow me on Facebook, Gate Drop Productions, and on Instagram, at Gate Drop Pro.